want to look at domain and range of functions. How do we find the domain and range of functions? So here we have f of x in my y is equal to square root of 9 minus x squared minus 7 minus y squared. B, we have that this is equal to square root of x squared plus y squared minus 25. Here we have f of s comma y is equal to square root of 25 minus x squared minus y squared. So here we have f of s is equal to sine 7 x plus 8. f of s is equal to cos this. So um, I will solve number seven, number 4 and 5 easily because they are very, very easy. Okay, in this one, you don't need to solve anything. When you're asked to find the domain and range of uh, sine and cos, you can easily get the answer. So the cos we are treating is minus 2, 4, 1. So the domain of sine function, domain of every sine function, the domain of every sine function is all real numbers. Okay, so the domain of f of x, comma y, equal to, okay, let's say this is a, let me, let me just include something, 7x plus, so let's say we have 8y plus 6. So it doesn't matter what you have. So let me include y here, so that it will be a function of two variables, okay? Function of two variables. So it doesn't matter what you have. It doesn't matter what you have. Since you have seen sine and cos, you can easily take the answer. So this, the domain of every sine function is all real numbers, okay? So the domain of sine bracket 7x plus 8y plus 6. I don't mind to know what is inside of it. Since I'm, I have seen this now, so the domain of f, the domain of f is from negative infinity to positive root infinity since it is a sine function now the range of f of s comma y is what it range from minus one to what one so for every sine function if you have sine anything the the, the domain is all in numbers okay you can still use r instead of this now the range is from minus one to what one. So let us solve number five. Number five. This is for number four. Number five. The domain of every cosine function. The domain of every cosine function is the same thing as the domain of every sine function. So the domain of f of x comma y equal to cos into 7y plus 16x squared plus 24 is equal to all real numbers or you can put it in this way from negative infinity to positive what infinity the range ranges from negative one to what one so the domain and range of sine function and cos function they are the same thing the domain of every sine function all real numbers they range from minus one to one the domain of every cos function all real numbers Okay, the domain is all real numbers. They range from minus 1 to 1. So now let us look at uh, question number 1. Okay, look at question number 1, 2, 3, and 5. So I will solve number 1. I will solve number 2. Like if you look at number 1 and the number 3, you find out that they look the same. Look at 9 minus s squared minus y squared. 25 minus s squared minus y squared. For this one, the number started it. Then minus s squared minus y squared. But for this one, it's, we started with s and y before what a number so this and this looks what similar so i will solve these ones that look different then you will solve this one this one will be your exercise then i will solve this one which is the last one then i will finalize the class so now so don't forget the domain of every sine function is all in numbers they range from minus one to one the domain of every cos function is all the numbers. They range from minus 1 to 1. So how do we find the domain of f of x, comma y, equal to square root of 9 minus x squared minus y squared? How do we find the domain of this? Now, you know that the domain simply means the point in the number line where the function is what? Defined. Then, you know that for every square root, you know that if you have a square root, a square root cannot contain a negative number, but a square root can contain 0, and the square root can contain a positive what number. The square root can never contain negative number. Square root of any negative number is mass error. Square root of zero is zero, which is a number. Square root of every positive number will give you a number. Remember mass one or two, okay? When you did domain and range of single variables. So it is applicable here. So for this function now to be defined, for the function for f of s comma y to be defined, 
you know that for every split function, the content can be zero. Or the content can be what? Positive. But the content can never be what? Negative. Okay? So now for the function to be defined, everything here can either be zero or what? Positive. Because we know that the square root of any number can never be what? Negative. So for the function to be defined, y minus x squared minus y squared must be greater or equal to what? Zero. So everything inside here can be zero or greater than what? Zero. But they can never be what? Negative. So now from here now we are true. We are true. You have gotten what you need, okay? So here now, you try to remove this negative. This is negative and negative. Take them to the other side of the equality sign. So here we have that 9 will be greater than or equal to 1 minus x squared goes over, change to x squared plus what? y squared. So we have that x squared plus y squared. Since 9 is greater than them, it means that both of them is less than or equal to what? 9. You cannot be greater than me and be smaller than me at the same time. If you are greater than me, I am smaller than you. If you are smaller than me, I am greater than you. So this is what we have. So from here now, you can now write the domain of this function. So you'll be like the domain, the doom of f of s comma y is such that you open a bracket for it. You can open a curly bracket. s comma y is element of arrow raised to power 2. The reason why I'm using arrow raised to power 2 is because I have s and what? y. So you need to cram this, okay? You need to memorize it. f of s comma y Okay, f of s comma y, sorry, this is f of s comma y, is element of this, okay? So the domain of this is element of this, such that, okay, or you can use only s comma y, because we are talking about only s and y, okay? Let us not in include the function. We know that the function constitutes of s and what? y. So s comma y is element of r squared, such that s squared plus y squared is less than or equal to what? 9. So x comma y are elements of what? Real numbers. The reason why I'm using a raised to is because I have s and y, so they are 2. So that's the reason why I have 2. If, if it is s, y, z, I will have a raised to power what? 3. So this is the domain. So how do we find the range? Now the range, it is very, very easy. The range is equal to, you know that for every square root function, the first answer it can give you is what? Zero. Every square root function, whenever you see a square root function, the range must start from here, zero. Just note it like that, okay? Whenever you see a square root function, the, the least answer it can produce is zero. So the range will start from zero inclusive. Now, will it tend to infinity? Or will it cut at a point? Will it go to infinity or will it cut at a point? You know that the square root of every, every number must be what? Positive. A square root can never generate a negative answer. You understand? Square root of any negative number does not exist. Square root of zero. You know, zero is a small number. It will give you zero. So that's the reason why the range must be zero. So we start from zero. So where will it go to? Will it go to infinity or will it cut at a point? That's what I want to know. So look at how you are going to know. It lies here. It lies here. Or you say it is. it lies here. So here now we have x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to what? Nine. So it is less. So let s squared and y squared, let s squared plus y squared be equal to what? z squared. Remember Pythagoras' theorem. Sums of the adjacent and opposite. Okay, sums of the squares of the adjacent and opposite is equal to the squares of the what? Hypotenuse. So we take it as this. So we have that z squared now is less than or equal to what? 9. So what is our z? Our z is less than or equal to what? Square root of 9 will give us what? 3. So z is less than or equal to 3. So which means that the range of this thing now will cut at where? 3. And 3 is what? Inclusive. So this will cut at 3. So that is the answer. Okay, you can you can put this thing here while solving it. You say s squared plus y squared is less than or equal to what? 9. So let s squared plus y squared, let it be what? z squared. Such that z squared is less than or equal to what? 9. So if you want to get the maximum point, make z subject what? Formula. Z now will give you plus or minus square root of 9. So you take the positive side, which is what? Plus 3. And it is what? Inclusive. So that is for this. So let us apply the principle here. It will still work for us. You know, the reason why I took 3 is because it is less than or equal to 3. I did mean that I get that z is greater than or equal to 3. Which means that it is tending to positive what? Infinity. But here it is less than or equal to So it is less than 3 or it is 3. So that's the reason why I stopped at 3. But if they said greater than or equal to it, so it means that it is more than what? 3. So it is going towards positive what? Infinity. Okay? So now, with this idea now, let us solve question number 2. Okay? Let us solve question number 2. So if I solve question number two, I will leave number three for you. You will solve it. Then for question number two, 
we have that f of s comma y is equal to square root of 25. Okay, this is a s squared plus y squared minus 25. So you know that every square root function must be what? Positive. It will contain from 0 to positive infinity, but it can never contain any negative number. So it will be like for the function to be defined, for the function to be defined, f of s comma y is such that everything here, s squared plus y squared minus 25, can be greater or equal to what? Zero. Remember, we did it for this one. So for every square root function, once you see, this is what you are going to do. 9 minus s squared minus y squared must be greater than or equal to what? Zero. It must. s squared plus y squared minus 25 must be greater than or equal to what? Zero. Very, very important. Now, at this point, we now have that. So the one that has negative, take it the other side, like this one. When we saw this one, we took s squared and y squared the other side because they are what? They have negative s squared, negative y squared. But in this one, now, the negative here is what? 25. So just take 25. So we have that s squared plus y squared is greater than what? Or equal to what? 25. Remember, when we treated this one, 9 minus s squared minus y squared greater than or equal to 0. So here we did 9 is greater than or equal to s squared plus what? y squared. We took this. So if 9 is bigger, so make sure that s squared and y squared is there. So since 9 is bigger, it means that s squared plus y squared is less than or equal to what? 9. So it is exactly the same thing as this. Okay? It is still the same pattern. All of them are the same pattern. Once you see it, tweet like this. So s squared plus y squared is greater than or equal to what? 25. So since I'm getting this, I will now conclude. The domain of f of x is such that you open a curly bracket. S comma y is element of how many real numbers do we have here to s and y? A root squared such that s squared plus y squared is greater than or equal to what? 25. So that's the answer. Now what is the range? We know that for every square root function, the least answer it can produce is what? So we just write 0, comma. Then let us know where it will end. Let us know where it will end. Whether it will stop at a point or it will turn towards infinity, like we did for this one. So you still do the same thing. So I told you that everything lies here. So you still carry this. S squared plus y squared is greater than or equal to what? 25. So by Pythagoras theorem, let s squared plus y squared, let it be what? Z squared. So this is greater than or equal to what? 25. So what is z? So let us solve for our z. So our z will be greater than or equal to square root of 25 will give us what? 5. So it is greater or equal to 5. So which means that it is what? Increasing. Okay? It is increasing. So this is tending to positive what? Infinity. Remember, when we solved the first one, it was less than or equal to what? 3. But this one now is greater than or equal to. So it is 5 or it is more than 5. So it is tending towards positive what? Infinity. So with this idea now, solve this one. Okay? Now let me solve the last one, which is number 5. So now, for number 5, we have f of s comma y is equal to x plus y over square root of 16 minus x squared minus what? Minus y squared. So this is s plus y, all n number, so it can accept anything. So we concentrate on the denominator, okay? Because the denominator has a square root function. Remember that 1 over any negative number does exist. Any number over negative number does exist. Any number over zero does not exist. So any number over positive number does what? Exist. So this is a square root function. So which means that if we are using the square root function, if you have a number over square root of a negative number, will it exist? N over square root of a zero, will it exist? Because we are talking about square root. Any number over square root of positive number, will it exist? We find out that N over square root of any negative number does not exist. Square root of a negative number does not So this thing will not work. Square root of 0 is 0. Any number over 0 will give you in the time unit. This thing did not work. You find out that it must be what? Positive. It must be positive. So at this point now, you find out that the thing that will work here is only, you know that square root function can accept 0, but due to its position under. Square root function, a normal note, if it is just square root of 0, it will give you 0. But now, if you, if you have this, now this is something that's any over. Square root of 0 is 0. So anything over 0 is what? Undefined. So for the function to be defined, for the function to be defined now, everything here must be greater than 0. It will no longer be greater than or equal to because this thing is under. So if it is 0, now it will be indeterminate. So for the function to be defined, for the function 
to be defined for the function to be defined 16 minus x squared minus y squared must be greater than what? 0 so it, it must be bigger than 0 you know, had it, when we treated this one, say greater than or equal to because it will, these ones are accepting 0 although this one will accept 0 but based on his position if he should accept 0 any number over 0 is what? in the time minute so 0 is, will no longer be there so at this point, now we now have that 16 will be greater than x squared plus what? y squared so what is our domain? domain will be such that S comma y is element of R squared such that 16 must be greater than what? S squared plus what? Y squared. Or we can still write this thing in this format. Remember that you can still make S squared and Y squared to confess. So this is something as S squared plus Y squared. Since 16 is greater, it means that S squared plus Y squared is less than what? 16. So such that S squared plus Y squared is less than what? 16. So how do we find the range? How do we find the range? So finding the range. So the range of this, look at how to find it. So you first of all write s plus y, and you write a square root of a, a 16 minus x squared minus y squared. So this will be equal to. What is the range of this? This is this thing now is like an entire function. It can accept everything. So the range of this, the one up is what? All real numbers. Now below, what is the range of this? You know that for every square root function, the first thing it can produce is what? Zero, comma. So where will it tend to? Will it cut at a point or will it tend to infinity? So let us check. So here now we have 16 minus x. Okay, let us cut it from here. Let us cut it from here, the way we did the other ones. So we have that x squared plus y squared is less than what? 16. Okay? x squared plus y squared is less than what? 16. So here we have that x squared plus y squared. Okay, let's say x squared and y squared, let it be what? z squared is less than what? 16. So if you make z a subject formula, it will now less than square root of 16 will give us what? 4. So it is less than what? 4. So this one now we cut at where? 4. It is less. It is not less than or equal to. So the bracket will be what? Open. So as you can see now, we are talking about all real numbers divided by positive numbers. So when you divide a real number by positive number, automatically your answer will be all positive real numbers. Okay? Is it all positive real numbers? No, you, this is all real numbers. Because inside x and y, negative numbers can be coming here as well. Okay? So the answer to this is all real numbers. Both negative numbers and what? Positive number. That is our range. That is our range. Okay? So that is the solution to this. So now, don't forget the way I treated it. I first of all consider the, the range of this. This can produce anything. So all real numbers. Then now consider this ones. So in our class, I will still treat this. The reason why I watch this video is so that some of you will not be stranded in your test hall today. So now, solve this one. Then go through everything. Okay? I repeat, go through everything. Now what if you have a function of this type? Let's say you have x plus y over, let's say you have something of this type x plus y over, let's say you have x squared plus y squared minus 25. You know, this one has no square root. So you have n over something, n over something, n over something. The other one we did there was n over square root, n over square root, and n over square root. But this one is n over just a number. You know that any number over negative number will give you something. Zero will not. Positive will give you something. So this over this, now for this function to be defined, everything under here must not be what? Zero, but it can be negative. Any number of over negative number will give you an answer. But any number over square root of a negative number will not give you an answer. That is why negative number did not work in the other one. And zero did not also work in the other one. Zero did not also work here. But for this one now, negative number will work. But zero will not work. Because if these things are zero, if these things are negative, it will still give you an answer. Because any number of a negative number will give you an answer. So here now, for the function to be defined, for this one now, for the function to be defined, for f of x comma y to be defined, x squared plus y squared minus 25 must not be equal to what? Zero. So as you can see now, the below can be negative because any number over negative, and so I just taking it as a number to give you an answer. Any number over zero will not work. Any number of a positive value will work. So, but the one of square root, any number over square root of a negative number, we're talking about the number. If there is square root here, now it will no longer work. You understand? It will no longer work. 
But n over square root of zero will also not work because square root of a negative number does not exist. Square root of zero does exist, but any number over zero, it does not work. So we have only n over square root of what? Positive numbers. So you need to take note of this things. If not, you, you will fail this thing. So now at this point, s squared plus y squared must not be, s squared plus y squared minus 25 must not be what? Zero. So this implies that s squared plus y squared must not be equal to what? 25. So what is the domain? The domain of the function. So this is very simple. It's such that s comma y is element of what? There are two. Arrow squared. Such that s squared plus y squared must not be equal to what? 25. So you cannot find the range. You cannot find the range. Range is equal to x plus y over under is what? x squared plus y squared minus what? 25. So this is an entire function. S plus, when you see something that looks like a polynomial, it is an entire function. So the range of this is all real numbers. Look at below. What is the range of the ones below? Also all real numbers. So when you intersect both of them, it will still give you what? All real numbers. So our range here is all real numbers. Or you can write it as from negative infinity to positive what? Infinity. So this is the solution to this. So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share. Watch it over and over again. Bring out the questions on your own and do what they solve. Don't forget sign and what? Course. Domain of sign, all the numbers. Domain of course, all the numbers. Range of sign from minus 1 to 1, inclusive. Range of course from minus 1 to 1, inclusive. Don't forget to take note of everything.